the Northeast Corridor, a busy, complex rail system that runs between Washington, D.C. and Boston, Massachusetts. Over 2,000 trains run on Amtrak's controlled segments each week, including freight, passenger, and high-speed trains. The Northeast Corridor accounts for over half of Amtrak's nationwide ridership and three-fifths of all passenger revenue. This is the story of two Amtrak bridges, over 100 years old, due for replacement in the quaint coastal town of Stonington, Connecticut. Two bridges, part of a vital link that connects New York to Boston. Majeski and Masters was chosen by Amtrak to design two replacement bridges and to find the best way to construct the bridges with little disruption to Amtrak service. The emphasis of building this bridge is to make as least as possible interruption of the, of the railroad traffic of the commuter trains that operate every day. And that was achieved by our design and by expertise of the contractor. We run roughly 50 trains a day, so it is a critical link, you know, for the railroad between New York and Washington and Boston. A solution was needed that would keep track outages to an absolute minimum. To facilitate this, Amtrak required that the contractor, Chinbro, replace the existing structures with two new bridges within a single weekend. Adding complexity to the project, the bridges are located over water on a causeway. To meet these challenges, Majeski and Masters proposed to build the two bridges on false work adjacent to the existing structures and then roll them into place onto new abutments. Because Amtrak can run trains in either direction on both tracks, foundation and substructure work could be completed with little disruption to rail traffic. A small amount of time would be needed for the actual exchange, meeting Amtrak's outage restrictions. At the site, micro piles and temporary supports were installed first. The pile caps were designed to be offset from the main girders of the bridge. This allowed the contractor, who was installing the micro piles, to operate on a 24 7 basis. Two abutments were then built behind the existing abutments. Roll in, roll out false work was also installed to temporarily support the new bridges and receive the old ones during the roll in and roll out process. This allowed the contractor to avoid the overhead catenary wires, which can make it difficult for cranes to operate within. So the commuter that came home Friday night and left for work on Monday morning didn't know that he was riding on the new bridge on Monday morning. Many rail commuters may not even notice the new bridges, but for the town of Stonington, Majeski and Masters designed a bridge that means so much more. Before we even got the project, we, we traveled to the site to uh, get a first-hand account for, for what was going on and what, what the project requirements would be. And uh, we ended up uh, at Don's dock, and Don was around. We, we spoke to him and said, hey, what are the real concerns here from the community? Not just the engineering uh, desire to replace a structure, but what, what did the community really want? What the community wanted was extra vertical clearance. The existing bridges, with their low clearances, prohibit larger crafts from accessing the harbor. The high tide literally locks in or locks out the vessels. You can't actually get to your home or you leave your home if you don't hit the time slot with, with the low tide. The two feet of extra clearance that we provided with our new design made a great deal to people of Stonington. Well, it has a, a tremendous impact uh, on people like uh, Don Hetherington at Don's Dock because by raising the bridge a couple of feet, he can increase the size of the boats uh, that his customers use. When we got into the design phase of the project, we met Amtrak's requirements, but we're also focused on doing what we could to get the bridges raised just so it could help out the boating public. Majeski and Masters was integral to this occurring because they were the only design engineering firm that came down and spent time with the community to understand what the request was for additional clearance and whether that could be achieved. Truth is, we just wanted to get this done. And now, look how it got done, and it got done so well, so fast, they're handsome bridges.
Jeske and Master did an excellent job on this particular project. They work well with our engineers in, in Philadelphia and they're very sensitive to basically the railroad's needs in terms of what needs to be done and how the job needs to be accomplished. I always felt that they were passionate about the local people, that they wanted to give us what we wanted, that they listened to us, that they acted in a way that was respectful of what we wanted to get, and it was never an imposition on them to, to try and incorporate uh, what our ideas were, what our goals were. As our brand states, we try to incorporate the community ideas with the design and ultimately with what the client wants. And in this case, it all happened to work out for the good, and everybody was happy. We were happy, uh, Amtrak was happy, and uh, Brian Cheesebro and the citizen, we were happy. I can see you know, taking a family vacation up in the area and being proud of, of this bridge and, and being able to show my family. And this bridge will be in place throughout my lifetime and probably my children's lifetime. So it'll be a lasting impression, not only for the people there, but for me personally. It's, it's something that we did and we know it's done right.